Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. So, it's been eight months since I updated my top five best CPUs list, and quite a lot has changed in that time. So before we exit 2021, I think it's best we do one last update. Of course, the biggest release in the last eight months has been Intel's 12th generation core series based on the Elder Lake architecture, and for now at least we have three new CPU series. So some major changes there on Intel side with very little happening over at AMD with the exception of those new Zen 3 based APUs which finally made their way to retail channels earlier this year. Though they really did fail to impress in terms of value but of course I will reevaluate that today. So with that let's get into the picks. Now, when it comes to entry-level CPUs, I think it's fair to say this has been AMD's bread and butter for many, many years now. But that all changed when they released Zen 3 back in November of 2020. Uh, since then, the cheapest CPU they've offered using the latest Zen 3 architecture has been either the 5600G, which arrived this year, uh, for $290, or the 5600X for $300. So basically the same price there for those six core processors. And really, both are pretty underwhelming at those price points. It is still possible to find the odd first, second, and even third generation Ryzen processor at a discounted price, but for the most part, they're simply not worth it. That's because Intel's offering the Core i3-10100F for just $90 US right now, with the standard version costing $125 US, which is still much better than anything AMD has. For the price of the Ryzen 5 5600G, for example, you can snap up the Core i7-10700F, an 8-core, 16-thread desktop CPU. So AMD is just nowhere at the low end right now, and it's a real shame. It's also the same story here in Australia, for those of you wondering. The 5600G costs $360 Australian, while the Core i3-10100F is just $125, making the Intel processor almost three times cheaper. Essentially, if you only want to spend around $100 US on your CPU, you have the choice of either the Core i3-10100F or the Athlon 3000G. That's a dual-core CPU with a 4 megabyte L3 cache, and it's an embarrassing comparison for AMD. Again, after dominating the best value all around a desktop CPU spot for years and years with the Ryzen 5 series, we had the 2600, which was followed by the 3600, AMD is nowhere to be seen in this product category for 2021, which is very disappointing. Again, the cheapest Zen 3 parts are priced at or very near $300 US. And then we have previous generation parts like the Ryzen 5 3600 selling for over $200, which is more than the MSRP. So at this point, I think it is time to give AMD the flick. Stepping in is Intel once again with multiple options. Right now, the Core i5-10400 is $165 US, while the newer 11400 is $190. That said, it is worth being mindful that early next year, the 12400 series will arrive. So if you can hold off, that might be worth waiting for, though I do expect those parts to cost quite a bit more. So if you've got a sub $200 US budget for the CPU, the 10400 in particular is basically impossible to beat. There's plenty of great value LJ1200 motherboards as well. The Gigabyte Z590 UD AC can be had for $180, but if you care about value, the B560 series is the way to go, and the MSI B560M Pro VDH Wi-Fi for $120 is a great value board. Throw a 10400 or 11400 on that thing, and you have a killer combo for the price of just the 5600X. Then if you want to play around with overclocking, the Core i5-10600KF can be had for $210, while the 11600KF is $230. Beyond that, we're getting up towards $300, and at that point, you're entering high-end gaming CPU territory, so let's move on. Now, for the best high-end gaming CPU, we are less concerned about price, and instead, the focus really is on performance without going beyond the point of diminishing returns, let's say. So price still does matter, but yeah, the focus is on performance. And that means the Ryzen 9 5950X and Core i9-12900K are out because, you know, not great in terms of value for gamers. There are still loads of CPUs to choose from, though, and again, most of them are from Intel. 
From AMD, you have the Ryzen 5 5600X, Ryzen 7 5800X, and if you want to go completely overkill, the Ryzen 9 5900X. The problem though for AMD is that the Intel alternatives are either much cheaper, making them arguably better value, or just as powerful. Now, if you're more value oriented, then the Core i7-10700F is really hard to go past at $285 US, or the 11700F at $310. Both are cracking good deals and will provide you with plenty of headroom in games for years to come. I don't feel that the 10900KF is worth the $440 US asking price. That makes it around 55% more expensive than the Core i7 equivalent for 25% more cores, which you're really not going to need for gaming anytime soon, though the extra L3 cache capacity can be beneficial right now. But still, if you want to go up to that next price tier, the Ryzen 7 5800X for $400 is just a much better value deal. The only issue for the 5800X being that for roughly the same price, the Core i7-12700KF can be had, and this is overall just a much better CPU in my opinion, often offering vastly superior productivity performance, marginally better gaming, and in terms of cooling, it's no more difficult to deal with. So for me, the Core i7 reigns supreme for high-end gaming right now, whether it be the 10700, 11700, or the 12700, they all have their place. Now, when it comes to productivity and core heavy workloads, the best mainstream desktop processors are either Core i9 or Ryzen 9 branded. From AMD, it's the $500 5900X or $700 5950X, and then from Intel, the Core i9-12900K for $620. At least that is the current asking price. If you're erring more on the side of value, then the Ryzen 9 5900X is very appealing. It's $120 US cheaper than the 1200K, Though, again, it is $90 more than the 12700K, and it does trade blows with the i7 for productivity workloads. However, whereas a decent Z690 motherboard starts at $200 US, a decent B550 board like the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, that costs just $120 US. And that means when factoring in the motherboard price with the 5900X and 12700K, they end up costing roughly the same amount. So it's a tough choice, and frankly, I feel like there's no wrong option here. I think I'd probably go with Intel right now, and the reason being that the Z690 motherboard offers much better features than a budget B550, and it's just overall a better product. But again, there's really no right or wrong answer here. Then the choice between the 5950X for $700 or the 1200K for $620, it's really just as difficult, and assuming you want a solid motherboard when spending over $500 US for your CPU, the associated costs there are much the same. It's worth noting though that for the 1200K to win the majority of the productivity test, it does require high-speed DDR5 memory, and right now that's just not a viable option. So had DDR5 been more readily available and at a small premium over DDR4, I might have gone with Intel, but for now, I think the 5950X just is the better choice. The Ryzen 9 processor is significantly easier to cool, and it does consume considerably less power, so overall, I think it is a better product. Of course, if for whatever reason 16 cores won't cut it, then your next best option is to dig really, really deep and cough up some first car money for a third gen Threadripper CPU. In fact, many of you have commented that these CPUs cost quite a bit more than your first car, and I'm not surprised because they've only gotten more expensive as time has gone on. So AMD is still yet to announce the Threadripper 5000 series, and it looks like that's probably been cancelled at this point, so that's very disappointing. And that means you are limited to Zen 2 cores, which includes the 64 core 3990X, the 32 core 3970X, and the 24 core 3960X, uh, all of which are beasts in their own right. At the time of making this video, all three models are available, the cheapest of which is the Threadripper 3960X for an eye-watering $1,650 US. So that's the entry-level price point, and it'll buy you 24 Zen 2 cores in a single package. But if that's not enough, the 3970X can be had for $2,400 US, and with that you get 32 cores, and if that sounds like half as many cores as you'll actually need, then may I introduce you to the 3990X for $5,100 US. It has 64 cores and 128 threads. 
Anyway, if you're after the most extreme desktop CPU, then it is quite clearly a third gen Threadripper model. I'm just disappointed that we don't have a Zen 3 version to recommend yet. Once again, due to pricing and availability, Intel largely dominated the picks for this update, and the release of Elder Lake helps them secure a foothold at the high end. So as it stands, Intel hands down claims three of the five picks, with the fourth being somewhat undecided and really you could go either way. I'm sure you'd be happy with either solution there. This once again proves that it really is all about pricing, and it's what kept AMD so competitive with the first few iterations of Ryzen, which weren't necessarily that competitive in terms of performance, but certainly were very good value when you considered the price. So, that being the case, this is a situation that AMD will desperately want to change before too long, or at least you'd think so. They've fought tooth and nail to claw back the market share they have, and giving up anything to Intel has to hurt, but that's what's going on right now. Intel sales are slowly recovering, so I hope AMD hasn't squandered their opportunity here by maximizing profits first. Obviously though, they are heavily supply constrained at the moment, but even so, I would have thought it an excellent opportunity to keep pumping out cheap Zen Plus parts. And this is because the more people they can get investing in AM4 with even a Ryzen 5 2600, the better, as that will no doubt see those users upgrade to something like Zen 3 in the future, and more importantly, it stops them from jumping on an Intel platform. Anyway, they haven't done that, but there's likely good reasons for going about things the way they have. But unfortunately, it has left the door wide open for their much larger rival. And that is going to do it for this CPU update. If you found this video useful, then please do give it a like. And of course, you can subscribe for more content. We have a few more videos coming up before year's end, so you're not going to want to miss those. Also, if you'd like to get involved with the Hardware Unbox channel, support us and get some cool perks in return, we have Floatplane or Patreon. Links for those are in the video description. You get access to our monthly live streams, Q&As, behind the scenes content, Discord server, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. As I said, links are in the video description, but if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.